أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين How everyone feels after the month of Ramadan How do we feel after the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you think if we really got the forgiveness? How are we going to continue? These three questions, I just put it in your front. So you can think about it. If we really got the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can we react? How can we behave? If we really deserve to be from those who was chosen from the night of power, you are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you behave after that? Are you going to be the same before Ramadan or are you going to be different? This is really a very serious question. When you answer it, you should know that Ramadan has did a change in your life, in your habits, has did a change in your reflections towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will know if you are among those who has been chosen or not so the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the series which we are talking about we start talking this series I'm just refreshing your mind to keep these points in your mind always The first point which I talk about is to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the very basic thing. It's very important that everyone who wants to deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing you should know whom you are dealing with. This is a very basic thing. And the second one, is to build your trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? The one who was taking care of you before even you was born. He wrote your name in the book of Allah, in Allawh al-Mahfuz. He write your name there before you are born. That you will be born on this time, at this date, on this place. From this father and this mother. Your name was there written from the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created the first creation, that was the book of Allah and the pen. And he told the pen, write. Then the pen asked Allah, what should I write? Oh Allah, Allah told the pen, Right, everything is going to happen from now till the day of judgment. So your name, my name, everyone's name was written from that time. And then when the time comes and we were born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you able to survive. He give you the opportunity to live. He give you the opportunity to be eternal. 
you gonna live forever. Our life in this dunya, yes, is limited, but our life in the day after is forever. So we got this chance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to live forever. How we gonna use it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the resources to survive and to live in this dunya. He didn't leave us alone. He didn't throw us in the middle of nowhere and do whatever you want. Handle your life. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was taking care of us. He gave us the tools. He gave us the ability to learn, to develop, to improve ourselves. He gave us the guidelines and He told us this is right, this is wrong. From the day one of the creation of a humanity, when He created Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that shaitan is your enemy. So take him as your enemy. So He told us who is your enemy and who is on your side. So He gave us all the tools to survive in the dunya and in the day after. And when we die, there is no any other place we go except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we came from nowhere, but we are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the cycle. And then we talk about al-khashyah. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the most respect and the most glorifying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is called al-khashyah. And we talk about the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How we can increase our faith and strengthen our belief and how to taste the sweetness of the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we talk about a very important thing that every human is always worried about is about the rizq. And the rizq is not only income. It's everything beneficial to human being called a rizq. And we told what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the basic rule about it that all the treasures of everything are in the hands of Allah. The treasures of everything it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no way you can get it without His permission. And you cannot get it by force. You can only get it by His permission subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُهُ وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ and then we said about a very important thing that open a very wide gate in front of us towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show Him subhanahu wa ta'ala our needs and we are so poor and so weak without Him we cannot do anything. Without Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot come to Fajr prayer. Many people, this masjid was full in the Fajr time in the month of Ramadan. And now where are those people? Without Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able to come. You will not be able to sit down and listen and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you this opportunity because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ عَلِمَ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا لَأَسْمَعَهُمْ Because He knows that, that there is good in you. That's why He called you here. He called you to listen to the zikrullah, to listen to the Qur'an, to join the jama'ah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this opportunity. In the battle of Badr, the believers were only 
313 while the kuffar were how much 1500 five times so what happened Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there and he make it happen that this battle was not even planned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah, when we start back a seerah, we get to this a very important battle better. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala planned it for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions. But look what happens. The believers only 313 and they are weak. They have only three horses, three horses. While the kuffar, they have 300 horses. The believers, most of them were poor and they don't have the proper weapons to start a war. And the Prophet ﷺ, he start the dua. And he show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the weakness of the believers. And he said, Oh Allah, we are so weak. And if this group will be defeated today, you will not be worshipped anymore on earth. No more. If Islam is gone at that time, it will be disappear. It's gone. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent the most important thing for anyone who is in war, a sakina. The first thing he sent to the believers, the calmness and sleep. He make all the army to sleep. Allahu Akbar. What is this army who is in front of the biggest army at that time and they are sleeping and the kuffar they are having a big party enjoying the drink and the dance on the opposite side while the believers they are sleeping subhanallah how the victory will come from those people who are sleeping it will come and not only that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the rain to wash them, to purify them from outside after he already purified them from inside. Subhanallah. And those people who witnessed the battle of Badr, they were recognized by all the companions. They are very special companions. They are very special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the victory they won the battle why because they showed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how weak they are how much they are in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya ayyuhan nas antum al fuqara ila Allah wallahu huwa al ghani al hamid O oh, you people, you are the poor and in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is the rich and the one who is able to give you everything you need. Everything you need. How much we are in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time, every moment, when you start your day, when you wake up, you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you to come, to help you to stand, to help you to eat, to help you to drink. How many people they are not able to eat food, to drink, go to the hospitals and see the tragedy there. See the blessings which you are enjoying while many people they are not. You are walking and you can walk how many people they cannot. You are enjoying a safe life. How many people they lost it and they are hunted. 
by the oppressors you are enjoying a family how many people they lost their families look to the needs which you are always having towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not only in the dunya but also in the day after on the day of judgment there is no shadow except the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the sun will be just two meters or less above your head do we really need the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes we are yes we are we need that so how can we get that shadow how we can be from those chosen on the day of judgment we try our best to be from those chosen in the dunya but we want to be also from those who will be chosen in the day of judgment that is our goal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ this is very important it's very important that the rizq <coughs> and the help it's not only the food it's not only the income but the help when you are in need for his help you will never know from where the help will come from which direction will will come the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam after he gave up from Quraysh so he think that the second biggest power is the people of at Ta'if so he thought it is good to go and ask their help and support since Quraysh they are not cooperating and they are not helping what happens in at Ta'if the biggest tragedy in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. When Aisha asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what was the biggest problem in your life? He said, when I went to At-Ta'if. That was the biggest problem in his life, ﷺ. He never think about al Madina. The Prophet ﷺ, he never thought about al Madina. And he used to meet all the groups who are coming for Hajj. And he met more than 26 groups from different parts from the, from the island of Arab. But he didn't meet the people of Al-Madina. Until the last third year of Al-Hajj, after he started the third year. And it was the last moment when the people from Al-Hajj, they are packing their luggage and they are leaving. So no more people still there, except very few. And among them were four young men, 16 years old and 17 years old. The Prophet Wasallam, he wasn't expect that those four young men is going to be the key for the next era in Islam. He never think about it. When you find that there is no way to escape, that there is no solution, you are in a big trouble, don't give up. Build your trust more in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think good that he's gonna help you you will not know from where it will come the help but it will come and the scholars they have a very beautiful meaning here in this tafsir they said why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Min la from the direction which you never ever think or even plan they said it is a proof for everyone that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It didn't come from where you plan. It comes from the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, it also to keep your heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That is another purpose. To keep your heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you have an issue, a problem, a need, you will not know from where it comes. So it comes from a different direction to tell you that it is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salam the stick and it turns to a snake, then he told him, go and meet Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh, he gathered the magicians because he saw a magic in that stick. Now, when the challenge happens, Musa stand and he don't know what to do until Allah told him, throw the stick. Allah did not tell Musa that to solve your problem, you have the magic stick. No. He told him, go and meet Pharaoh and ask him to release Bani Israel. And when the challenge happened, Allah did not tell him that the stick is going to solve your problem. When the challenge happened, Allah told him, now you throw the stick. It will defeat your enemy. When Musa alayhi salam was running away with Bani Israel and they reached to the sea, he don't know that the stick is the solution. Bani Israel said, فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ we, We're going to be caught. Pharaoh and his army is here. And the sea is behind. Where to go? We stuck. What, what Musa alayhi salam said? He said, no. No way. Allah is with me. And he's going to help. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, hit the sea with your stick. Subhanallah. It's a magic again. But this is the special things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Bani Israel, they are in need for water. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa. He told him, hit the, the rock with your stick again. It will give you the water. Twelve sinks of, of water comes out for Bani Israel. So all the time the stick was with Musa alayhi salam. But he never think to use it. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him do it. It is mainly to keep the heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you will never forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last 10 nights of the night of the night of, the nights of Ramadan, He did not tell us when the night of power is going to happen. Why? Because He wants our hearts to still open and keep open and keep the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night, every night. On the day of Jum'ah, the Prophet sallallahu he said, in the last hour, there is an hour that your dua is answered. Allah was able to tell him which hour is that, but he didn't tell. Because the same way, he wants us always to be connected with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be open and make the dua and the zikr all the time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Fatiha. We read Surah Al-Fatiha every day how many times? More than 17 times. In Al-Farz, 17 times. And the Sunnah with every rak'ah. Surah Al-Fatiha is the first lesson for us that it teach us to ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you start Surah Al-Fatiha, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everything should start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een. Without your help, I cannot worship you. 
Without your help, I cannot do anything in my life. This is the teaching of Surah Al-Fatiha. And then you ask Allah, Allah, O oh, guide us to the right path. Ihdina Sirat al mustaqim And at the end, you said, Ameen, O oh Allah, answer the dua. You open your hands. Don't be shy when you make dua to open your hands. By Allah, I saw some brothers, they make dua like this. I never saw or hear anything narrated from the Prophet or the companions that anyone will do dua like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. This never happened in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ud'u Allah, what? Bibutuni akuffikum. Means with your lap open, with your hands open, like you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah wants. That's what He wants. He wants to, sh to see how poor you are, how you are in need for Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ used to make dua in the Battle of Badr. He keeps raising his hands, making dua, raising his hands, making dua, raising his hands until his head, his dress fell down from his shoulder. This is how we should behave and react with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him our weakness and our need subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember the hadith which we talk about it. <clears throat> hadith Qudusi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, All of you are hungry except those whom I feed them. Oh my servant, all of you are hungry except those whom I feed. So my servants asked me to feed you. I'm going to feed you. Oh my servants, all of you are naked except those who ask me to cover them. So ask me, I will cover you. Oh my servants, you are in need. This is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's asking us to make dua for him. He's asking us to ask the help from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Musa alayhi salam, he used to make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything in his life, even the salt for his food and the tie for his shoes, which is very basic and very, very simple thing. But he used to make this dua. And this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wants us to do, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything in our life. And the last thing, is very important when we feel that how much we are in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the bottom of our hearts with the most feeling that we are in need imagine someone he is in a very bad need and he needs a food for his children. What he's gonna do? If at home he is, has nothing, what he will do to bring the food for his children? He is able to work any kind of work, any type of job he will accept. And if there is no job, if there is no work, what he's gonna do? He will start knocking doors, asking, some food, even little food, to feed his children, right? So this is where we want to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This much of need, we have to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are all making dua with open heart, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer you. And how much you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your need, how much the dua will come and will be answered. And as Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim said, that the most dua which should be answered and the biggest gate which can in entitle you to go through it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you show your weakness 
and need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer those who are showing him how much they are in need, how much they are poor, how much they are weak. Without him subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot do anything. We cannot live, we cannot breathe, we cannot stay alive every night, every night. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing. Allah يتوفى الأنفس حين موت حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى. So every day when you go to sleep, your soul is captured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone, everyone, the believer and the non-believer. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide which one will be released back to that human or which one will be still with the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every night, and that's why the Prophet sallallahu in the morning when he wake up, the first thing he will say, Alhamdulillah alladhi radda ilayya ruhi. Alhamdulillah for bringing back my soul to me. This is the first thing. So every day, our soul is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every day we should say, Alhamdulillah, for bringing my soul back to me, O oh Allah. You see how much we are in need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Without His permission, our soul will not come back. We will not live any more day. So this is the much of need that we have to think about it and to feel that without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we worth nothing. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma jma'na ala ma yurdiq. Waj'alna min al-mutahabbin afiq. Allahumma jma'al jama'na hadha jama'al mubarakan marhuma. Wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi ma'asuma. Wa la taj'al minna wa la fina shaqiyan wa la mahruma. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ridaka wal janna. Wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wal nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ridaka wal janna. Wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wal nar. اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا مريضا لنا إلا شافيته وعافيته ولا حاجة لنا من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا يسرتها وقضيتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا وأنت راض عنا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا رب العالمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم إنا نسألك قبل الموت توبة وعند الموت شهادة وبعد الموت راحة وسعادة اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا